target was 11 trains. They did it on 311. In Spain, um, in the United States, we call it 911. They have a thing in Spain they call 311. They're 911. Then in 2005, in London and the UK, uh, there were more uh, bombs uh, uh, put in <coughs> trains. That happened on July 7th, 7 7. In England, they call that event 7 7. I sense 9 11 was a precursor to rapid coming changes. I don't know why I felt that, probably with all of the other studies I did, but I felt that was a precursor <coughs> to, to coming changes. My determination to understand the significance of 11s intensified because of this event. It was so obvious to me and the people around me that I felt that the, that this, the timing of this and the significance of the 11s had a greater significance. Like what I found here. Chapter 6 is God, called God's First Man and First Son. I started studying um, historic September 11th dates because I felt if September 11th was significant, then there's probably some significance to this date in the past that can almost confirm that this is an important date. So I um, started studying those dates. I came across a gentleman called Dr. Ernest Martin. He's an historian. And based on celestial charts and alignments, he calculated that Jesus was born on September 11th, 3 BC. By the way, that book was written in 1976, 25 years prior to 2001. That was, for me, a wow moment. You're going to see a bunch of things that, that say a wow moment. That was a wow moment for me. Uh, research revealed uh, in a 1976 article. Uh, it was then his research was published in a book called The Birth of Christ Recalculated. And in 1981, the book was republished again, entitled The Star That Astonished the World. Uh, Dr. Martin um, uh, died in 2002. I have spoke to the family of Dr. Martin. And um, actually, they called me because of September 11 news, because this is on my site. And um, we had a very good chat with Dr. Martin. Uh, Dr. Martin's family is absolutely convinced of, of his work. Also found another special date. On September 11th, 1999, the Jewish calendar became 6,000 years old and 9-11 is celebrated, September 11th is celebrated as the anniversary date of the creation and birth of Adam, the first man. So we've got an historian saying that Jesus was born on September 11th. We have the Jewish, the Hebrews saying that Adam was born on September 11th. In fact, they even celebrate that day as his birthday, September 11th. I'm starting to feel there's more to this September 11th thing than 9-11 when you've got God's first man and God's first son um, are now showing as perhaps being born on 9-11. On 9-11. God's first man and first son were born on 9-11. The day our modern world changed, this seemed to be beyond coincidence. Then I found more. The first major attack, the 1972 Munich Olympic Games ended on September 11, 1972. I don't know if any of you recall the, the Munich attacks. 11 Israeli athletes were killed. 121 countries participated. By the way, 11 by times 11 is 121. And 9-11 occurred exactly 29 years later to that event. <coughs> and for those of you who are into to numbers, 29 is an 11. Other 9-11 uh, events in history I've covered. Manhattan, where, where this first strike took place, Manhattan was discovered by explorer Henry Hudson on September 11th, 1609. So the place where they even attacked on that day, Manhattan, was discovered in 16, on September 11th. The construction began on the Pentagon on September 11th, 1941. That's when the other place that was hit, the Pentagon. New York was essentially founded on September 11th. Manhattan was at any rate. And the Pentagon began construction on September 11th. Both places were struck by 9-11 terrorist planes. They were either found or created on September 11th. 
Other 9-11 terror war events I uncovered. The last battle of the American Revolution began on September 11, 1772. That's the last battle of the American Revolution. It was the siege of Fort Henry. The first day the American flag was used in the battle was September 11, 1777, the Battle of Brandywine. Mormons were massacred on a wagon train Mormons massacred a wagon train of uh, Arkansan immigrants traveling to Utah on September 11, 1857. Last year, a film was made about that. It was called September Dawn. On September 11, 1990, Bush Sr. outlined his uh, plans for the, for the Gulf War for Kuwait to the U.S. Congress. So it was a speech to the U.S. Congress. Um, Eleven years later to the day, that's when the terrorists attacked the United States. Eleven years to the day. I sensed the Levens were no longer just discoveries. They were confronting. Every time I did something, I felt they were confronting. The more research I did, the more I felt they were confronting. In, in, uh, in 2002, after all of this, um, I joined an auto dealership because I needed a job and I wasn't prepared to leave the city. I found a good bunch of people who, weren't, who were, um, had some integrity. Uh, 02, my son's kidney was removed. In 03, my father died. And in 04, I went bankrupt. Miserable period. But I'm still here, I'm very happy. Book two, part three, the final discoveries. Universe of 11 dimensions. This is a this chapter is a complete wow moment for me because in all of my discoveries of the ancients, I had determined that they were convinced that there were 11 dimensions, universes, spheres. They all called them something different. But then I find that, that scientists, in a very short period of time ago, are now convinced the universe is made up of 11 dimensions. In fall 2004, I was watching one of my favorite ch ch channels, PBS. I was watching a program called NOVA, I watch it every Tuesday. I was flipping through TV and I heard, uh, when I was flipping through, our 11 dimension universe. Um, uh, and I thought to myself as soon as I heard that, was science confirming Pythagoras' concept of an 11 sphere universe? Um, and this would become a major discovery for me, connecting 11s with philosophy, spirituality, religion, and science. Ryan Green, who's the, uh, uh, who is a physicist and an author, hosted the uh, program was, uh, uh, the program called The Elegant Universe. Ryan Green, of course, is 11 letters. The Elegant Universe um, is really a very, very heady talk. It gets into quantum physics, parallel universes, string theory, and many other things that uh, tend to boggle my mind when I try to get uh, knowledge into it. So I don't study it like a scientist. There were three episodes in the, in the program. One was called Einstein's Dream. The other one was called Strings the Thing. And the last one was called Welcome to the 11th Dimension. In a nutshell, what these programs were saying, Einstein's Dream, the first episode, was, uh, talks about Einstein's pursuit of a single theory or formula <coughs> that explains all things in the universe. It's called the theory of everything. And many scientists today are now working on what's called the theory of everything. One formula that explains everything in the universe. Strings the thing um, talks about a universe comprised of vibrating energy or membranes or strings like a cello. Um, and those, those are, he's talking about dimensions, they're actually called brains. Now he shortened it to B-R-E-N-E-S. And uh, all these dimensions, they're saying, can be side by side. There can be a dimension right beside us here, but they never touch. 